All right, guys, welcome back to Mill RC, and today we are kicking off the newest build series on the channel. If you all remembered, uh, last year we did the SIG 4 Star 40, and it came out great. I was able to throw my own spin on it, and I still have that plane to this day, and I love flying it. So, as you know, uh, winter is upon us, so it is building season, and um, I have a new project on the bench. So this is a Pika 1 5th scale Waco YMF3 kit. So the story on this is my brother purchased this kit two years ago, and he was actually going to build it himself. But high school or in life or something like that got in the way. I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, and he was not able to finish it. Um, as you can see, this is as far as he got. Top wing. Um, but anyway, uh, pulled this thing out of storage two days ago, and I was like, cool. This is nice. And, you know, I've been needing a new building pro or build project. And I was like, well, why not? Because I have it here now, and... Might as well go ahead and build it. But in any case, uh, that is the details and where I'm at on this uh, current project right now. So anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started on the bottom wing. Alright guys, uh, the rear spar is good to go. Um, the braces are epoxied in place and they are uh, good to go, so we're awesome there. I also did trim and shape the trailing or the back ends here of the spars uh, using this plan right here. I just laid it over and they came out great. So the rear spar is good to go. So now we're ready to start on the center section and what we have to do first is glue these parts together. Uh, these are two balsa and two ply parts that are going to make one rib and they have a slot there because it has a wing dowel that goes right there. And then next uh, we're going to lay down this sheeting right here in this particular order or uh, sorry this order right here and then from there on out we pretty much use these W17 ribs to space uh, everything that's going to sit on top of these uh, out so that's kind of the plan now because these braces are longer than stock in fact these are actually how long the stock braces are i did have to uh, carve out these uh, slots here for these wing ribs to fit but that was a pretty simple task so but anyway uh, that's the plan so let's get to it So you can see I've got my bottom sheeting uh, all made up and I've got that pinned in place where it's sitting nice and flat. Uh, next, we're gonna take the, or this 532nd by 5 8 and we're gonna, manual says to glue on this leading edge stock first, but I'm gonna do this just to make sure, or so this actually sits 90 degrees like it really should. And then yeah, uh, use these ribs or a W17 here and just get everything spaced out right and make sure it all looks good, then I'll go ahead and glue it all in place. Um, and as you can see, we got the uh, wing dowel center section uh, clamped in place and uh, glued up. So anyway, yeah, let's uh, get this all spaced up and maybe start gluing some ribs on.
All right, so as you can see, we've got the uh, center section pretty much uh, kind of assembled now in a manner. I've got the uh, wing dowel holder in place along with the rest of the ribs and everything, so we are good to go there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install these uh, braces for the front spars for the left and right wing. As you can see, they have the dihedral angle in them as well, and they just slide in and butt against the back here just like this. And then we're going to throw these two ribs on. These are slightly different, uh, just so it can contour to the shape of the wing and all that. And then I think at that point, this thing is ready to uh, depin, or I think there's a block of wood I have to put in here yet, but that's later on down the road or whatever. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, finish this up and uh, we'll get right back to the action. So as you can see, the center section is coming along. Uh, we got the two outer W18s on, and the reason why these are different is because when we sheet over this, uh, it'll be nice and flush, because you can see it's slightly taller than these guys. So that's the deal there. Next step is taking this uh, balsa block and putting it in between these two ribs here, and then depinning it, and then finishing off this rest of the bottom sheeting, and then we will be good to go. So let's continue on. All right, so I've got a little more work done on it. I finished the bottom sheeting with the uh, last bottom piece and it came out uh, really good. So we're looking good to go, or we're looking good there. Uh, and then I didn't mention it or uh, film it, but I went ahead and inserted this uh, 5 16th inch square uh, upper spar area here. And that all uh, came out all great. So uh, last thing that we're going to do for this center section is get these shear webs uh, in place here. See these fit perfectly and I'll get some in between here and then just uh, sheet the top and uh, then put this trailing edge block that is on the plans here. Put that back here, sand it all the shape, all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. So anyway, let's go ahead and get that done. So as you can see, we have our center section all sheeted up and the hole for the servo wires and all other stuff to come through. So we are good to go there. Um, now we are ready to start construction on the left wing. And as you can see, uh, we start by pinning down the rear main spar right here. And once we do that, then we're going to pin down this uh, 3 32nd by 2 uh, leading edge bottom sheeting. <clears throat> now, you're probably wondering if, or if you can see, it kind of, the plan for whatever reason tapers off. I did cite the plan, it actually does bend that way. So I don't know if they're just poorly drawn or something's up, but it's not straight. The sheet is straight, so I decided to, or I followed that instead. So we'll see how that turns out. But pretty much what we're gonna do here for constructing the wing is the manual or the manual says to glue the leading edge first i don't like to do that i like to glue this first because it gives me a little bit more reassurance that this is 90 degrees glue that glue this leading edge piece and then we're going to go ahead and just put all our wing ribs on so that's the plan and uh, once we get all that done we will report back so let's get to it
Okay, we've got all the ribs in place and they are drying right now, which I am going to let them dry fully because I did kind of make a mistake here. And that is this has to be flush with this wing, wing rib, uh, pretty much this whole assembly uh, right here, as indicated by the plan here. And the reason is because there's a block for us to shape the wing tip and all that. So in hindsight, I should have uh, trimmed that, you know, flush before I, or according to the plan, before I even started gluing the ribs. So I may have to deep in this to, to uh, trim that flush, or maybe I can get a saw in there. I haven't really decided yet. In any case, I'm going to really make sure the glue is dry on these wing ribs. Um, but after that, uh, I'm going to put on the top trailing edge parts, which is just 332nd wood that goes here. And then this uh, number or well, they call it W13, but it's just like an aileron hinge block. We'll go there. And then from there, it's pretty much just building up the rest of the wing tip. So anyway, that's the plan. So let's get back on the time lapse. Alrighty, folks, here's the wing in its current state. I did do a few unannounced steps, and that was adding this 5 16 inch uh, leading edge, or yeah, leading edge strengthening, I guess, or how does it uh, spar? That's what the plans say. Then depinned it and added the block and finished the trailing edge sheeting, top and bottom, and that all came out uh, pretty good. So, uh, last steps are we're going to glue on this wing tip here to the end and add these gusset pieces right here. All right, so I'm going to explain my strut mounting sequence a uh, a little more detail, I guess. Uh, I have this aluminum part right here that obviously has the tab built in into it, as you can see, according to the plan. And this aluminum piece is going to get sandwiched in between these two uh, pieces right here. Uh, then we let that all dry up. Then I'm going to drill two holes and then put two dowel pins in it so it can't absolutely cannot separate. So I'm not just relying on glue. Um, but yeah, then I. Uh, lay some plywood parts in the bays, as you can see here. Uh, it goes in here, and then plywood something to go in there. Then you just make the slots for the tab to come out of the wing. Or no, we don't, because this goes up. <laughs> so I have to make slots in the sheeting, at least for this front one, when we get the leading or sheeting the front leading edge. But I don't have to on the back one, so just thought of that. But I want to show the same thing as you can see on the top wing. That's what we got going on. You can see the mounts right there. They're epoxy to the ribs. And there's the two dowels holding it together. And then obviously the uh, tabs just protrude uh, through the bottom right there. So really cool. That's uh, how this my mounting setup is going to work. I think it's a lot better than what they recommend. They recommend plastic. You're using something. I just wasn't comfortable with that. So I went ahead and made my own. But anyway, yeah, I'll go ahead and get these uh, mount assemblies all put together. And then we'll go ahead and glue them all in place. So here are my strut mounts. As you can see, I've got the dowels uh, running through them and they are ca in place, so they absolutely cannot come apart. I'm not relying totally on the uh, uh, epoxy to hold them in place. 
And then obviously these just get uh, or slide into here and then they get epoxy and then I'm going to drill a hole through it, the, the mounting bracket and the rib after the epoxy dries and all that just to run another dowel in so i once again not just relying on the epoxy if it wants to rip out it's gonna have to take the whole uh, ring wing rib with it Alrighty, so while the epoxy mounts are drying, I decided to go ahead and start working on the ailerons since I need four of them, so I might as well get started on now. Uh, pretty simple, basic setup. Uh, we lay the pre-cut th 330 second sheeting here. It's got eight of them, uh, one for a bottom and a top side of the aileron, and then we put on this uh, piece right here. It tapers down, as you can see, this aileron will taper with the wing. Uh, just like the wingtip so we'll go ahead and glue this on make sure this uh right side up mark is up and then pretty much from there on out just glue a four i only have three but four of these a1s and then a2 goes on the very end and then you know we leave this open until we deep pin it off the plan then we glue it shut uh the only thing that I'm going to do differently. Well, and then we put this plywood piece. This is normally where the control horn would go, which goes in between uh, these two A1s right here. Uh, and I will put that there. However, I'm going to put a second uh, piece of plywood because I'm going to defer from the kit just a little bit. Uh, if you look at the re full scale Waco, uh, it's push rod or control is much more on this side than it is on this side of the aileron so i'm going to move that over i'm still going to put this in just for the strength of it but yeah i'm going to actually put my control horn more on this bay i guess since one a1 goes here and the other one goes there so anyway that's the plan and then yeah put the aileron together and then look at the finished result and i gotta build three more what they do So as you can see, I have added the slave strut connector, I guess. I'm not sure what you call it, but you know, the this here uh, is what this connects to to getting the ailerons together. And I spent uh, quite a bit more time on this than probably most guys had, or most people would have. And that's because I had one big issue with it. And that is they wanted you just to glue one eighth inch ply on top of this three thirty second sheeting. Well, the problem with that is that is just going to show through the aileron as indicated by the plan here, and it does isn't going to match the contour of the aileron either. And it's just, it didn't look very, it doesn't look as nice to me. So what I ended up doing is cutting a hole in this 332nd bottom sheeting and making this flush with the bottom here. And... Then I had to sand this down enough to get it to uh, sit for, get the sheeting to sit flush uh, down here. Then I added this uh, connector here is what I'm going to call it. And went ahead and countersunk this wood to hide the screw. As you can see, that will not be seen when it is fully covered. And then just added these 1 16th inch uh, pieces of sheeting to uh, make sure this... Uh, doesn't come out. Uh, obviously, you can make the argument that this isn't as strong as the way they want you to do it, but uh, as you can clearly see, this setup looks 10 times better. It is uh, The connector is at the right angle according to the plans here, and there is nothing but this connector showing up. There isn't a screw or anything. It just looks so much nicer uh, to me. So, uh, 
that's what I did here to get this piece in there. Obviously, it was a little bit more work than just slapping the plywood on top and then screwing this mount on. But, you know, I just really wanted mine to look better. So that's what I did. But anyway, I thought I'd document that. I didn't get it on film because I had to think for probably two hours on how to do it. And this is the method I came up with, and I think it'll work really good. But anyway, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get this top sheeting on, and we will finish up the rest of the aileron. All right, so as you can see, I've got both wings in here, and they're looking really, really cool. And all the ailerons in their respective slots, you can see or where they would go. And the top uh, slave strut rod mounts for the top ailerons are pretty much done the same as the bottom ones there. Just I basically inverted it. The plywood backer and the screw is just on the inside. And uh, it I think it'll work just as fine. I'm pretty confident in the setup, so we should be good to go there. But yeah, good looking set of wings. Uh, I did do or I did drill through these mounts and put skewers in them just so they're not totally reliant on the epoxy. So I think that'll make it quite a bit stronger because, you know, if these mounts want to come out, they have to physically pull the whole rib with it, which is very unlikely. So very, very cool. But yeah, uh, both wings are looking really good. So yeah, I can't wait uh, to get this thing all together and sheeted. I think or the wings all together and sheeted, which will look really good. But I am going to hold off on that till my lights get here. I do plan on putting four landing or four total landing lights in the bottom wing. Uh, just like a full-scale YMF-5 Waco. And then there's a pretty large pitot tube that goes on the top wing, which I feel like would be easier and would be a lot stronger if I could maybe glue it to the side of a rib or something. Haven't fully decided yet. But for now, I'm going to leave the leading edge sheeting off just till my lights get here and I fully know what I want to do with how scale the tail I want to make it. Anyway, yeah, that's part one on the Pika One Fist Scale Waco. If you guys have any questions, you can put, go ahead and put them in the comments below. And make sure you all subscribe and hit that notification bell so uh, you'll get notified when the next part of this build comes out. So anyway, yeah, thank you all for watching Miller RC, and we will catch you all in the next part on this Pika One Fist Scale Waco. Oh.